My name is Sonia. I am the, my, uh, the 3D printing lead on Knights of N1, and I'm a senior. I've been on the team for four years, and I've done a lot of manufacturing, which I think I'm qualified to talk about this, hopefully. Um, so what are we doing here today? Um, we're going to go through the general process, like just a surface overview of how we do things, and then we're going to go more in depth on how we manufacture and how our process is actually structured and how it works. So our process. Um, this is a qu very quick chart. Um, basically, we go from design to making drawings. And once the drawings are done, we go to a specific machine. If it's lathe or mill, parts go straight there. If it's router, there's a little bit, a lot, a little bit of steps before that. Then the parts are finished, inspected, and put in their boxes with other parts from the same assemblies. This is just a quick overview. So once a part is catted, I have this part over here. It was catted on the computer. Then a drawing was made for it. After the drawing was made, we do CAM, which CAM basically outlines the paths in which a machine will cut the part that's done on a computer. And then we make the part on this one was made on the router. So the final product is it's right over here, this part over here. Um, and I'll pass it around in case people want to look at it. It's a pretty cool part. Yeah, this was on our intake this year. So this is just how a part gets made. Now let's go more in depth about how we actually do things. One of our machines we have is the super cool CNC router. We made this ourselves. Don't try this at home. Do not make a router by yourself. Bad idea. Um, you have to know a lot of things. Too many things. Um, our mentors made it in 2015. So now we use it. Pretty cool thing. Costs a lot more to make than to buy it. And it's a little more finicky. So what can we make on the router? We can cut metal. Cutting sheet metal. Basically, what you do is you put a sheet of metal on the bed of the router, and it cuts out parts for you. We can also cut polycarb, which is plastic that's coming around the part that's being passed. And we can cut wood. This whole structure thingy is made out of wood that was routered. You can come after the presentation and look at it. It's a pretty cool thing. Um, as well as we can cut tube stock. Tube stock is a little different because it takes more time. It takes a different type of cam. You have to flip over every side and manufacture it separately. So, but our router can do that on the side. If you can see over there on the side, we have like a fixture for it. So how do we get to actually making a part on the router? First, what we do is we do cam. Uh, CAM stands for Computer Aided Machining. Basically, in your CAD program, we use SOLIDWORKS. You select the paths around the part. So if I have a part over here, I would select all of the pockets and the contours around it. And this is the path that the tool will follow. And then the program converts all of the paths into G-code, which are specific coordinates on the part and specific commands for the machine to know what to do when it's cutting the part. So once CAM is done, we go into sheet output. Um, we have our own special program written by Parker Shu. It's named Travis Prague. Um, what we do is we place a 2D outline of a part onto a virtual sheet. So this sheet also exists in real life, but this is a virtual representation of it. So when we place it on the virtual one, it tells the machine specifically, specifically where on the sheet it needs to cut the parts. And then cutting on the router, you load in the sheet, you update it, and you load on the program. And the machine just knows what to do. And you sit back and relax and watch it and make sure nothing goes wrong. If something goes wrong, that will be very sad. Yeah, this was very sad. Coolant was not working, so the anvil broke didn't, was not good. Another machine we have is the lathe. So this is a machine that we bought. 
standard lathe. Lathe is a machine that cuts parts while they're spinning, and you just drill through them or cut the parts. So the drill is not actually spinning, the part is spinning. You can make all sorts of cool things on it, like shafts. I'm going to pass a couple around if you want to look at them. You can do a lot of cool things. We mostly make shafts on it. Then we also have a mill. It's a two and a half axes. What that means is the bed of the mill moves while you have to press down to actually cut into the part. Um, mill is similar to a router, but instead of the router where the drilling part itself moves, in the mill you move the table to cut the part. So why do we mill if it's so similar to the router? Mill is for more complicated parts and parts that have more depth or need to be more precise. So like these parts over there in this corner, they're very thick. So it would be very hard to make them on the router. But on the mill, it was easier to make them because you can go a lot deeper and you can actually go a certain depth down that's more precise than on the router. We also mill carbon fiber. So these are not the square tubes that were milled, but this is an example of carbon fiber. Carbon fiber dust is toxic to human beings, unfortunately. So machining it on the router would mean that the dust would go everywhere on the router and then out of the router, and people would be inhaling it, which would not be good. On the mill, you can wear masks, and only a couple of people can be in the room, and it would be much safer to cut it that way. So for mill, for the router, we have cam, where you select paths, and it cuts the part for you. For mill, it's a little bit different. For the mill, you can, either, you can also do cam. You can select certain paths, and it will cut the part for you. It will cut the pockets and the holes everywhere. But you can also do a drawing. So over here, I have a part. It's a simple tube. Um, it has a little bit of holes in it, which means it's not that complicated. And you can basically do it by hand and just go to every position because it's not going to be changing that much. So you can over here see how you use the drawing with the mill. So yeah, that's for the mill. I keep mentioning drawings. Who are these drawings? Well, first, every part has a number. If you, when you look at the part that's being passed around or over here, you notice that we have a part number over there and the name. So the name is Swoopy Thing 2. The part number is 130. So every single part on our team has a number and a name. This helps us keep track of the parts that have been have been made, designed, and manufactured. It also helps, helps us keep track of the progress, like if the part has been manufactured but has not been inspected yet, then we, we know that through this spreadsheet. Sheet drawings. Sheet drawings are basically for the router parts, most of the router parts. Before we even get into manufacturing, once CAD is done, we make the drawing to make sure that we know what the part is. And once we manufacture it, we can put it together with the part so it doesn't get lost. And we know how many we made and where they are in the assemblies. Lathe drawings. Lathe drawings are a little bit more special because unlike the router, for the lathe, you don't actually make a program. You make everything by hand. So lathe drawings have all of the information on them. And you look at the drawing, and you make the part. Lathe drawings are also kind of used for a double inspection on our team. While the person is making the parts, they inspect them and make sure that all the dimensions are correct. And then another person later inspects the part and makes sure they're, they're correct. And then the person who was making them was not biased towards their work. For a mill, for the manufacturing drawings, kind of like the lathe, we have all of the dimensions on there from all of the sides. So if there's multiple sides, like on this part, there's a depth and flat. All of those dimensions will be on there. And they'll be like, if you can see there, it's from 0 and then to a specific length from where it goes. So you can just put it on the mill and go to those specific coordinates. Finishing parts. So once you have a complete part, 
once you have a this very nice part. It's often not done. So over here, you can see that these parts, they have little tab thingies on them. This is for the router. When you make parts on the router, they need to be held in on the sheet. So when you cut them, they don't just fly out in your face. So those tabs help prevent that. And once we jigsaw them out, we need to get rid of the tabs. So we either file them off or just cut them with a notcher. Once that's done, we file and deburr parts. Filing and deburring basically makes them smoother and nicer. And then if parts need to be bent, they're also bent. Pretty self-explanatory. There you go. Whoop. Inspection. Once parts are deburred and finished, we can inspect them. Inspecting basically means that we check all of the all of the important dimensions on the parts and make sure that they're in spec. If they're not correct, then we have to either remake the part or decide whether we care about those dimensions or not. Usually we do, so we try to make the parts nice right away so we don't have to remake them again. But yeah. And then after the parts were finished and inspected, they're done, we have an assembly kit for them. All of the parts are in a specific assembly. So you take them and you put them, let's say you made a part and it's a transmission plate. You would put it into the transmission kit. Or if it's a drivetrain tube, that would go into the drivetrain. So all, every assembly has a number to it and a name and a bin. And that bin is a kit. And we also have parts for un like for inspection. And we also have bins for inspected and uninspected parts. So if the part is not uninspected, you put it in the uninspected bin. And once it gets inspected, it goes into the inspected bin and then gets distributed into the kits. But there is more. That's not all we can do. We have some advanced machining. This is not done in the lab. This is done outside the lab, so, but it's done by our mentors. One of our wonderful mentors, Jay, has a lathe. It's super cool. It's a lot better than ours, and it can do more things than ours. So it can make cool shafts for other parts that are way too complicated for us to make. And we also have multiple of our mentors working at Oris, where they have a CNC mill and a CNC lathe, which allows us to make really cool parts, like these ones on the next slide. Look at that. It's on the arm over here. I don't, do you guys want me to pass it around? Y'all can look at it. It's big. Be careful, yeah. yeah, that's the 2018 arm. And we also have the other part. You can pass it that way. Yeah. Or actually have two uh, large CNC machines. Yeah. They have the small mini mill that we use those on. And uh, through some of the pressure put by our mentors, uh, they just upgraded and got a special VM3 And then, besides this part, I could not bring this in because I could not find the part, and the other one was attached to a full robot. But this is basically the final product of this prototype. So instead of all of these wooden pieces, I'll bring it over here. Instead of all of these wooden pieces over here, it was a giant metal piece manufactured on the CNC lathe at Aureus. Took a lot of time and a couple of tries, but it came out to be really nice and a really cool metal part. So you're wondering, what if I don't have all of the cool machines, or a mill, or a router, or even a lathe on my team? Well, you don't have to be 971 to have a similar process to us. The drawings process. You can always make drawings for your parts to make sure that you can inspect them, and check them, and keep track of them. Part numbers and parts list. That's also very effective. I have heard that some teams, a lot of the teams, who don't have part numbers for every part, often lose their parts and they go into the middle of nowhere and then they can't find them and have to make new ones. So part numbering really helps with that, really helps with the workflow and managing parts, keeping track of them. And inspection is also a very good thing. In, you can apply it to anything. If you have a couple of calipers, you can always measure your parts, make sure that they're in spec. 
and then they're nice. Yeah, works great. And that's it. And if you have any questions. Hi, I'm Sarah and a mentor on FRC Team 971. We hope you enjoyed this video. For more videos and resources, please subscribe and visit our website, frc971.org.